Hello everyone. Uh, yesterday I posted this picture on the Facebook group, and I shared this image, this panoramic image, to uh, 360 panoramic photographer on Facebook and uh, the Kukam group because this is a shot by uh, Channel Kukam. Uh, people like it, and uh, some of them want to know how to create such stunning images with some proper post-processing tricks and I think there is uh, no secret in my post-processing it's just some basic skills in Photoshop and some other tricks so in today's video I want to show you every one of my steps uh, in the post-processing so you can get an overview of my workflow after taking these shots of course uh, to get such imaging quality you have to use uh, DNG8 mode and with the help of Camera Plus. So in today's video, I'm going to start at uh, the workflow right after the shooting. And this is are the, the DNG sequences uh, of my uh, DNG8 shot. So normally in DNG8 shot, you will get 8 DNG shots in a sequence. In a burst mode, very fast, and you can see in this, uh, in this, in this photo, I have uh, 0.8 seconds. It's a quite long exposure. Uh, and let's go back to the image. Uh, I place the, I place my camera and the, the selfie stick at this part of the image, this part, and I make Nadia badge in Photoshop so that you you can see. Uh, I am invisible. The selfie stick is also invisible in the final image. Uh, later on, I will tell you how to remove the nadir part to make it look perfect. So this is the image sequences uh, after my shots. Uh, uh, basically, I take two DNG8 shots uh, for every one of the parameters. So for this shot, uh, one of the DNG8 was from zero. Uh, 0 01 to 0 08, and after that, I want to get the, the best image quality, so I take another DNG8 shot with the same settings. So, so, altogether, for the single exposure, now I have 16 DNG shots in a sequence, and uh, you can get a very high image quality when you stack in the 16 shots together in Canon Plus. Later on, I will show you. And uh, if you uh, analyzing this image, you can see that there are some highlights that are overexposed. But for the shadows, uh, I think everything is, is fine. Especially when you are looking at the, the histogram of this image, you can see there are lots of details in the dark areas. But for the highlights, we do have some overexposed. Uh, which, in, in my opinion, will ruin your image in post, such as uh, the highlight on the grid, on highlight on the rooftop, and uh, the highlight on the far side of this image, the the bridge, the windows, and this part. Okay. So, I make a separated, uh, a shorter exposure shot. This only for the highlight, as you can see that. I recover all the highlight details, but I lose most of the dark areas. But this shot, I only uh, take the advantage of the uh, highlight areas, and I, I want to combine this this shot with this shot to get a very good dynamic range. Oh, so let's get started right now. To open the uh, latest version of the Canon Raw Plus and uh, select the 16 shots uh, into the Raw Plus software. So in this case, uh, drag and drop. Uh, normally I will drag and drop twice because I will select different reference images to to, the, to patch the the people or some unwanted objects. And for the highlight, uh, because the I only use the highlight, so select the 16 shots and drag and drop the raw pass. That is my uh, workflow. That's step number one. And next one, 
I want to uh nope, not this one. Next one I want to find uh the reference, the proper reference image. So let's go through this uh software one by one, okay? To see which one is the lucky shot. Which one should be set as a reference image? So by looking at these images, we can see there are three people at these areas, and I think they are quite, uh, are quite good. If the people appear in the image, in the beautiful scenes with people, there will be a more vivid shot. And uh, so you can see the the baby, the people are moving around, so the dark blur. Uh, but let let's try if we can find some lucky shot. Let's for those. And you can see in this photo they are solid, stable. Okay, so the second shot, I will definitely choose this one as a reference shot. The third one, and the third one is even better because you can see this these guys uh, are very clear, and this guy they got blurred, right? And go some one one by one with your patience. Uh, finally, you will find that. And in this shot, there's uh, no people here. And there's no people here, right? And in this shot, we have the guys here. So I would uh, simply set the third one as reference image. Of course, you can set this one and this one as two different reference image, and you can mask out the people uh, in the scenes. But uh, I want to keep the people there because. I think they are very uh, appropriate. They help to make the image more vivid. So I will set the third one as a reference image. Drag and drop. Now is this one? I will remove this task. And the reason I why I want to take the 16 shot in DNG is that the file number is limited to 16 in each task. Each task. So I can take the full advantage of the Canon Raw Plus. Get the highest image quality uh, with the DNG sequences. Now I click on render and uh, let's wait for it to render. And in the latest version of Canon Raw Plus, the render speed is, is amazingly fast. As you can see, it's, it's running amazingly fast. Okay, now it has uh, finished the rendering and you can see in this the KD raw folder, I have two separate DNG files which were rendered at a bit depth of 16 bit depth and, and a very high image uh, quality with almost uh, no noise. And this shot I will open in camera raw and uh, a post process on this shot. Uh, I highly recommend you use uh, uh, the camera, the latest version of Camera Raw. Uh, so this, for example, is uh, the 11.4. Uh, now I'm used to the the 12.0 beta version. Mm, it's, that's just okay. And normally I will use. Uh, I have created a preset for my uh, cool cam shot, as you can see. And I will show you what on earth is inside my preset. Uh, I just uh, leave the white balance as it is, and I I would like to raise a little bit the exposure, the lower the contrast, uh, compress the highlight. You can see you can uh, bring back some details in the highlight area, right? And the white sometimes uh, you can uh, turn it back and forth for the best uh, appropriate slider position, right? And uh, the blacks. You can uh, bring back the shadow details, and so that you can get uh, a better control in Photoshop later on. And next, the three sliders are magical. Uh, normally, I highly recommend uh, in the latest version of Camera Raw, we have texture slider. I highly recommend you uh, push the texture slider to the right, uh, so then you can your uh, image will look more vivid and more sharp uh, there is will be more sharpness as if you have more resolution but in fact it's not right but it will look uh, the image will look more clear and sharp and without affecting the 
these areas. So the texture slider is quite different from the clarity and the, uh, the dehaze. I personally, uh, I would like to use texture more like uh, the clarity. If you look fine-tuned clarity slider, you can see the effect will be more strong, which I'm not uh, very like this clarity slider. But for texture, I like it very much. The haze will be stronger and stronger. So I just leave it as it is. Mm. Later on, I will uh, raise a little bit vibrance, uh, a little bit saturation. Uh, sometimes I would reduce some saturations because uh, in post processing, uh, sometimes it's very easy to get oversaturated with the level and the curve adjustment. So why not turn on vibrance and at the same time reduce the saturation a little bit. The next slider, uh, sharpening. Uh, I don't want to use any sharpening at uh, this level. Um, and look, a noise reduction, I will turn it to zero because the camera pass has helped me remove most of the noise from this image. So there is almost uh, no noise in the raw data right now, right? And uh, next up is the uh, hue saturation uh, adjustment. Uh, sometimes I I personally, uh, I would like to uh, make it a more orangey look, but uh, in this, right, and, uh, and it is for saturation and lumin luminance, I, I don't make any corrections. And uh, next up, split toning, split toning, uh, I'm not quite good at split toning. Uh, lens correction uh, removes uh, chromatic aberration, click on. Because it will help you remove some of the chromatic aberrations in your image. Did you see that? You click on remove, right? And your image will get sharper and, and better. That is the magic of remove chromatic aberrations, right? This before and after, right? Okay. So that is all the basic sliders uh, in Camera Raw, and that is the, the preset. You can save it as your own preset uh, next time you will post process uh, full cam photos or some other camera brand. And I can synchronize this image, right? Okay. And next up, you can uh, just save the image as the TIFF. 16 bit depth with Adobe RGB. Uh, and next up, uh, we have two choices. The choice number one is that you can blend the two exporters in uh, HDR software such as Aura HDR, which is uh, very good at uh, rendering the night. And uh, for the panoramic shot, uh, be careful to not click on auto alignment because it will ruin your shots in stitch. So I will always leave auto alignment blank. And uh, during the HDR merging, there will be more chromatic aberrations. So you better turn on the chromatic aberrations. And there's a ghost reduction because in, th in this shot, we have three people, right? And in this shot, the people are gone. So there must be noise, uh, not must be ghost after the HDR merge. Uh, but uh, at this step, I will leave it blank because if you turn off the ghost reduction, you will get a, a, the best HDR merging result without any deghosting. And personally, I would like to deghost manually. And quit HDR, right? It's very easy. And you will get the result uh, in a second. Uh, you can see. It's before, it's before and after. So be careful with the highlight. Now you get the the highlight detail back after the HDR uh, fusion, right? Before and after, you can see. But at the same time, we have some ghosting, right? The before and after. You can see the the people got transparent before and after. And uh, 
I use this software only for the HDR merging. I don't want to make uh, too much uh, post processing based on these sliders because I will uh, do them in Photoshop. Uh, so in this case, uh, we have, and normally I will turn on the smart structure a little bit, make it more sharp or more crystal clear, right? And that's it. And uh, for this uh, your HDR 2019, there's a very good feature called layers. You can add to the imaging layers, and uh, uh, this is my shot, and this is uh, this shot. You can uh, correct the ghost manually uh, without any sliders. I turn on the smart structure, and and uh, click on the pen, pen tool, brush, brush, and you can brush the people back. Do you see that? And so now we have. Uh, finish the deghosting, but uh, be careful with the people uh, inside the the shop. There is also a, a ghost, but if you uh, use this, the, the people will you will get back some details, right? It's very easy. So this is this before, this is after, right? And uh, if you want to get back more uh, detail. Of the of the shop, you can you can uh, choose the erase and burn back a little bit more dynamic range inside the shop. Uh, you choose the bend and erase back and forth. Finally, you will get the best possible result of every detail in your image, right? And that's it. And uh, now it's it's done. Uh, okay. So it's before and after, right? You get a much more dynamic range from uh, combining the two images, right? And next, you can uh, export this HDR fusion shot to the the folder. You want is this KD raw, and this is the 4K image. 4K export. Uh, I don't want to overwrite and uh, choose a different name called uh, with the HDR suffix. Okay, export. And after a few seconds, uh, the, your HDR will generate. An HDR image for you. I don't save. Uh, you can see it's here, right? And you can make a before and after comparison, right? Before and after. You do uh, bring back the detail at the highlight, but at the same time, you have uh, maintained the overall appearance, the feeling about this image. So that is uh, the post process before I uh, uh, post. Post process my image. And the choice number two is that you can uh, add the, the two T files in Photoshop and uh, manually blending the images. And that, that's also that's also fine. It can show you the post processing. It's very easy because we have only two photos, right? Uh, use uh, masking magic and uh, some is a flow it's a little bit flow and you can get get back and many details right let's see right and you get get back some details in a few seconds right yes and like this, right? And you almost uh, almost done. And uh, for this shot, you can use the levels to merge it better. At the same time, retain some uh, retain the highlight, fine tuning the tone. 
and that's it right and you can see before and after you can see that before and after right and we can also bring back some uh, detail in the highlight and manual by manually blending and in this uh, in this approach we don't have to worry about the ghosting because we have precisely controlled every pixel in Photoshop and that's it. Uh, next up, I will uh, stitch these TIFF files uh, in the Kukam Studio. So I'll open up the Kukam Studio, click on Edit. Now I'm using the 1.4.4.6 uh, on my Windows operating system. Drag and drop uh, because in the Aurora HDR 2019, it will retain it will return all the exif information. Uh, such as uh, camera data, the camera data uh, is uh, the make, the maker, the model, the serial number, the sensing method, the sharpness, and everything uh, captured inside the camera. So the Kukam Studio will recognize this image at the first glance, and it will help us to stitch the image perfect. And by the turning on the color correction by default, uh, we turn left and right about the your and in this image I think the boat are the, the point of interest of this image so I will put the boat in the middle of my uh, equirectangular panorama right and you can see I'm sitting behind <laughs> I'm seeing I'm uh, sitting behind this stone and this is my uh, selfie pole and my back so I'm going to remove myself in this photo okay and uh, now we are almost uh, finished. I put the boat in the middle of the area and add the render. Uh, and in the render panel, we choose uh, the super resolution with the 8.6K and with the PNG output, form output format for the best imaging quality. And click on the on stage panel because we want to. If there are some stitching errors uh, induced by the optical flow stitching algorithm, uh, I'm going to correct by the unstitching panel. And I will correct uh, the, all the rest of the stitching issues in uh, Photoshop. Yes, and let's render off. It's very fast. Uh, now we will get the result in seconds. Right, and there is a new folder called the, the candle output. Uh, we click on the output and we can see uh, it's been rendering it's running a, a super resolution algorithm so the rendering speed will be slower than the 4k rendering uh, but by a, a 8k rendering you get a, a better imaging quality so now you we have uh, the final result uh, we'll add to the layers to the add to the in Photoshop, add the three pictures to the Photoshop, and the first step I will correct the the stitching line. Although in this uh, shot it will be almost uh, not not so much stitching issues, but uh, let's uh, better take a look at this images. Click on a layer mask. Click on a layer mask. And you can see on the letter letters we do have some stitching issues, right? And we can uh, bring them back a little bit by uh, using the layer mask trick and magic. Here's the flow to the 100 percent. Okay, and we do have some uh, stitching issues. Okay, this one also. Yes, and this one. Okay, okay now we have correct the, the stitching lines. It's very simple, right? But we have some artifacts which we are going to uh, correct it in Photoshop. So now we are uh, finished. Take a look at this one. 
Oh, if we can uh, correct this. Oh, yes. We can correct uh, this angle and this angle by uh, shifting the images, right? OK. Yeah, now it's uh, it's a perfect image. This shot. Yes. Uh, good. Result is uh, it's pretty good after this. Uh, a magical trick in Photoshop, right? It's before and after. So we have correct all the stitching line, and uh, uh, there won't be any stitching line uh, on the far side because. For the point and shoot VR cameras, um, you don't have to worry about the stitching too much, unless, unless if you are shooting very close to your object. Now we have finished and uh, correct all the stitching issues. We merge down, and next up we are going to correct, uh, uh, make some nadir patch, because in this situation I'm shooting uh, in the uh, not straight up and down, so. The nadir part is in fact uh, it's in this area and in this area. So the first uh, I'm going to correct myself. Uh, it's like uh, click a new layers and I use the patch tool to patch uh, my my body. Right. And sometimes uh, we can add some selections to make the more precise in the patching. Right. Okay, and this uh, select the, the sample, the cell current, and layers. You can uh, very fast. You are going to remove the nadir part uh, very quickly and very effective. Right. Okay. Okay, but we do have some issues uh, on the edges of the selection. So we are going to uh, uh, and use uh, use some more tricks at the top to make it look better, right? And uh, you can see we can even uh, put back the detail on the uh, advertisement board. Okay. Okay. And to make it more, make some feathering. Okay, so now we have uh, corrected this part. Next, we are going to correct this part. Oops, sorry. Uh, also, we are going to uh, make a, a selection of this area and use some patch tools to quickly patch and merge these areas. That's very uh, fast, uh, but you need some patience. And you can make it. Uh, everybody can make it. Right, choose the flow to 100%. Will be more sharpness. Okay. Okay. So. We uh, make some more precise adjustment on this border and correct the stone. Right? Yes. And uh, and that's it. Right? Oh yeah, we do have some shadows because the of this area. Shadows, we want to remove the shadows. Yeah, and that's it. That's it. Uh, now we finally have made a perfect. Oh no, this is uh, some minor stitching issues. Oh, we can correct it. Okay, so now we have made a perfect stitching result without any stitching issues, and we can merge down to the image and don't forget to save it as quickly as possible right and uh, to save it to the a 
SQR results with the profile of Adobe RGB. Okay. So next, I'm going to color correct this image. So this image, the, the contrast is not that good. And the night is it's more bright. It's more bright. It's brighter. It's brighter than the, the, the real things. So I'm going to color correct this image. Uh, the first one, I'm going to check the color space, whether it is Adobe RGB or not. If not, I will assign the color Adobe RGB color profile because I'm uh, working in the Adobe RGB color space. And uh, my monitor was calibrated precisely towards Adobe RGB. It's 100% uh, coverage. And next, I highly recommend you to use the, the TK, TK panel. The TK panel, which you can uh, utilize the luminosity mask tricks. And there is a very magical bundle in this TK panel. It's called Dark's Triple Play. So I, I normally use the Dark Triple Play to analyze this image, make different luminosity masks, and you can turn on and off to see the best results. It will cut your scenes into different luminosity range and you can uh, burn back many details. For example, you can burn up more darkness, right? With different uh, with different different effects. And you can also compress the light because this this uh, this curves was created based on the luminosity mask. So that is a very fast and efficient workflow. If you get to know the reason how the luminosity mask works, right? And uh, I also create uh, my own action set uh, like this. Uh, it's like uh, creating a level, creating a curve, creating the three hue saturation layers, and finally creating a, a curve layers. It's less simple, right? And for the levels, uh, normally it is lighter to 0 0.7 to compress the, the dark areas to make it more vivid. And next, a curve I will create a, a simple S curve to increase the contrast because before the post processing, the contrast was very low. And for the hue saturations, if the image is uh, oversaturated, we can burn back the saturation a little bit uh, to make it more natural. But in this case, I think that the saturation is okay because we have reduced a little bit of saturation in Adobe Camera Raw. Okay, so we don't have to worry about the, the saturation issues. But now we can see we are losing too much detail in the dark areas. So next up, I, I'm going to bring back the dark area a little bit by turning on this uh, luminosity, luminosity mask. A stock triple play. Now we are going to get this is before and after, right? The image look much better than the first one. And on the final, on the top of the curve, um, also you can bring back the light a little bit. I can also make it more contrasty by using this curve on the top. And also, I I, I think the, the the sky will should look dark darker than these things. So I will use a level to compress the sky and use a gradient mask. Only select select out this top of the image. While at the same time uh, bring back some of the details of the flag. Right, and that is uh, my post-processing workflow. I'm showing you uh, step by step. And uh, last but not least, uh, you can see uh, in these areas, the blue color is not good, it's oversaturated. So, in the few saturation layers, I uh, will select the blue and uh, turn down the saturation of the blue a little bit uh, to make the image look better and better. And also, this. You can see the before and after, right? So after the turn down the blue saturations, the image will look better. 
and that's it and you can uh, finally you can click merge all the layers on the top and don't forget if you want to take the fully advantage of the dynamic range of your JPEG files so you you, you should not forget uh, to use the kind of histogram out if you want to use the full tone of the 8-bit JPEG files so don't forget to click on auto contrast to take the full advantage of your 8-bit uh, depth image and now you can uh, uh, oh yeah and next up uh, you can uh, you can sh sharp the image I can use the uh, uh, image size uh, we can use the resample is the be cubic sharper uh, choose the 3620 which is looks better on Facebook and I click on OK and the image will look sharper uh, after the resizing it will be better than the, than the image in the shot and uh, next up you can save to the to your uh, no next up before posting to the website you should uh, convert the image space from Adobe RGB to sRGB to make it more safety on the color size yes and uh, you can now save to your computer and this is the result and you can view it in your uh, in your viewers and that's it that's it that is exactly the result we have created from this ENG sequences and uh, also if you want to add some metadata before posting to the Facebook uh, don't forget to use uh, the case Martin's uh, axial fixer uh, it's very simple drag and drop to the axial fixer and click on add metadata and it's done after that you upload this JPEG file to your Facebook group and it will be uh, recognized automatically as a 360 photos and will be displayed interactively with your audience yes so that is all the step-by-step uh, -step tutorials on this image and uh, if you like it and I, I would like to share uh, more of the post-processing step-by-steps uh, in my workflow and I hope it will help you to get a better image from your point and shoot VR cameras uh, not only in Kukam but any other cameras you have to make the full advantage of your cameras to create a better image share with your friends uh, you will get happiness and you will enjoy your life in a better way yes so that's all for today's uh, tutorial video tutorial uh, hope you like it and uh, see you next time